Hello and welcome to Cooking Technique Tuesday. I'm super excited about today's video. Uh, so I'm actually doing a recipe from the Mediterranean Table Cookbook from WW. Uh, I have a lot of WW cookbooks going back to the 1980s. This is hands down top three of all time. It is fabulous. Uh, so today we're actually gonna be making homemade whole wheat pasta with pesto. So I've got all my ingredients ready to go. So I'm gonna show you how to make homemade pasta, how to roll it out yourself with a rolling pin in case you don't have a fancy pasta machine. Uh, and then we'll make some quick pesto and we will get started here in just a second. I'm excited for this one. I'm Italian, so I love pasta and I'm on purple. So whole wheat pasta is even better, right? So let's have fun and let's get started. All right, our first step is to make our whole wheat pasta dough. So I have whole wheat flour, I have eggs, I have some salt. I also have a little bit of water and a little bit of all-purpose flour. It's not in the recipe, but I'll explain as we go on why I have that. So to the whole wheat flour, not stone ground because that makes it a little grainy, but I've got a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. And I want to make sure that that gets incorporated and evenly distributed. So I'm just taking a fork, kind of whisking it around. All right, and then what I want to do is create kind of like a, almost looks like a volcano. And in the very center, there's going to be like a little well. This is called the well method. So what I'm going to do is add my beaten eggs into the well. And using my fork... I'm going to incorporate it together. So I use a fork in the beginning and then I will use my hands. And then what we're gonna do is use a little bit of the AP flour on my um, kitchen island here. And we are going to knead it for a good four to five minutes. We really wanna develop the gluten. And then I have the water there too, just in case this ends up being a little dry. Um, and if it ends up being dry, I'll show you kind of what that looks like. But you can also uh, find pictures of it online as well. But just want to make sure I incorporate it. Get a little bit of more of the flour worked in with the egg before I put it on my counter, just so it's a little less messy. Um, but it's actually really easy to make pasta dough. And one of the more important things too is once I get this needed, I am going to wrap it in plastic wrap and let it rest for 30 minutes. I want to let the gluten relax. I also want the dough to hydrate. So when I let the gluten relax, what's going to happen is it's going to be way easier for me to roll it out. And if you have a pasta machine at home, feel free to use it, but you will earn fit points by rolling out this dough. So it's coming together pretty well. I'm going to start using my hands now. And then making sure to incorporate all the little bits of flour at the end. If you're ever stressed, making dough is nice. You get out all the aggression. And it's healthy because it's whole wheat. So I found my flour at um, Whole Foods. I think sometimes it's a little difficult to find whole wheat flour. It just kind of depends. Um, I didn't check sprouts, but I do know Whole Foods has it. So... I have pretty much incorporated all of the whole wheat flour and the dough's still a little sticky, which is actually good. Because again, we do want to make sure that it's nice and hydrated. So we move this and then I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of AP flour and I'm just going to work the dough. It'll also help if I flour my hands a little bit so that it doesn't stick. So I'm going to earn these fit points for, like I said, about four to five minutes. You want to be cautious and not add too much AP flour because then you will definitely have to add water. And right now, the way that the dough is feeling, I actually don't think I am going to have to add any water. So I will see you back in just a couple of minutes because it is going to be boring watching me do this for four or five minutes. All right. See you in a minute. Alrighty, and we are back. So, spent about five minutes kneading this dough ball, and as you can see, it's gorgeous. It's nice and smooth. It's definitely not too dry. If it was dry, you would still see some pockets of flour. It would rip apart easier, but this is our holy pasta dough. So now, like I said before, we gotta let it rest to let the dough hydrate, to let the gluten relax a little bit so it's easier for us to roll it out. But we do not want this to dry out. So, I am putting it in plastic wrap. 
And I'm just gonna leave it at room temperature for half an hour, making sure that this does not dry out. You know, there's no yeast or anything, so it's not like it's gonna rise. We just, again, wanna let the gluten relax. So while we're waiting, we can go ahead and make the pesto. See you in a minute. Alrighty, welcome back. So while my whole wheat pasta dough is resting, I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and make our basil pesto, which is super simple. I have my food processor out. I have two cloves of garlic. And what I'm gonna do is just to kind of chop them up a little bit, I'm going to pulse it about five times. Four and five and six, just for good measure. There we go, alrighty. So it's got some of the chunks out at least. And then what I'm gonna do is add the rest of my ingredients. So obviously we need some salt. So get this. And I'm using kosher salt as I always do when I am cooking. Alrighty. Now, usually pesto has a lot of olive oil, which means a lot of points to it. So I've got three tablespoons of olive oil, but I also have some reduced sodium vegetable broth. So I'm gonna add both of these. That'll help with the liquid. And make sure to use the low sodium vegetable stock because I was looking actually when I bought this and the difference between the levels of sodium are just astronomical. So you really want low sodium so that you control the salinity. Now I've got toasted pine nuts here. And I've got Parmesan cheese, which you can't go wrong with, right? Add that. Basil is wonderful. It smells amazing right now. And then it's gonna smell even better with all the garlic and everything. So super pumped. I'm gonna take a couple of these larger stems off and just place these in here. And then I'm just gonna let it process. Oop, there we go. Put the lid back on. And it should take maybe 30 seconds or so. I'm just gonna turn it on and let it go. And as you can see, it goes by pretty quick. I actually think we're pretty good. That looks like a beautiful pesto. Oh. Ah, yummy. Whoops, it's mm, okay. Oh, it smells incredible. That is what it looks like. So I am going to take it out of this so I can wash this and put it in a different container and then continue to let my dough rest. So I will see you back shortly. All right, so we are back. Pesto is made. I've got some water starting to boil in the back just because it does take a little while to, uh, to let it come to a boil. Uh, also, I have my hydrated, relaxed whole wheat dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap it. And it is time to earn some fit points and roll it out. So as you can see, I have this gorgeous disc here. I am going to use a bench scraper. You can also use a knife, but I'm gonna cut it into fourths because you certainly don't want to work with the whole thing because that will take up a lot of space. Because what we're going to do is roll this out. So your quarter should roll out into about 22 by 5 inches. Uh, this is about 20 inches long, so a little further than that, and about 5 over. Um, I also am going to cut it with a um, pizza cutter at the end. I have my French rolling pin, which is my preferred rolling pin. You can use the regular ones that kind of roll. I just like the control that this one has. I also have some flour, just some AP flour, uh, that I'm going to put down. Now, in the recipe itself, it mentions doing this with um, plastic wrap, and that does make less of a mess. I'll be honest, I just don't usually use plastic wrap, and I'd rather do what I'm comfortable with. So, I also wanna make sure to flour my rolling pin. And you don't wanna to put too, too much flour out, it's really just so it doesn't stick. So I'm also just going to, there we go, I'm gonna make it into kind of like a little rectangle into the way that I want it to end up rolling out. Alrighty, and move that so I have some space to work with. There we go. I'm gonna start from the middle, go forward, come back, go forward, come back, 
I'm gonna flip it. You do wanna move it around some because otherwise I can promise you right now, this is going to stick. So that is another reason why you wanna make sure that you do keep a little bit of flour on there. Flipping it again. And you're gonna end up wanting this to be about maybe like a 16th of an inch thin. You don't necessarily want it to be so thin that it could tear easily, but you also don't want it as thick as like dumplings or anything. So, me. So it's starting to get there with a little bit more flour down. Alrighty. Now, I have a lot of dough that I am gonna need to roll out. So, what I am going to do is do it in a little bit faster of a motion. Alrighty, much quicker when you do it in time lapse. So, <laughs> I do have one serving size right here. Now, if you do not feel comfortable making them even by yourself, you can use a ruler. Alrighty, I did add a little flour to these so they don't stick together. So I've got my water boiling. One thing that the recipe in the Mediterranean Table Cookbook did not mention is salting the pasta water. And I cannot express how absolutely integral it is to a recipe. When you are making pasta, please salt your water, even if you have to watch the sodium levels. You will save on salting it afterwards, which never soaks into the pasta. So there is an actual purpose. Salt is a flavor enhancer. It will add to the pasta and it will soak into the pasta while it cooks. Now the nice thing about fresh pasta, this should only cook about four or five minutes. Alrighty, and I'm gonna add this in here in just a second. Uh, use a colander with it and then toss it with some of the pesto. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you tell fresh pasta is done. See you in a minute. Alrighty, my water is boiling. I'm going to add my fresh pasta. This is just one serving's worth, uh, but what I wanna do is as soon as I put it in there, I want to make sure and stir it. Now, the cookbook says this should take about four to five minutes to cook. Now, I made mine a little thinner just because that's how I like my pasta. So I'm gonna check it at like two and a half, three minutes, because as I said before, fresh pasta does not take long, but I heavily salted my pasta water and I will be back when this is done. Alrighty, it has been about three minutes, so I'm going to taste this. No one wants to watch me chew, so I'm gonna do it off camera. Tastes perfect. It's not doughy, has a little bit of bite to it. It's never gonna be as al dente as uh, dried pasta, but that is what we got. Now, I got some pesto here, and I've got a bowl. I'm actually just gonna toss my one single serving in it, and then I will plate it and be back in a moment. Alrighty, and we are back. It is all done. It is coated in pesto. I also have some shaved Parmesan because why not? The more cheese, the better. Obviously, that will add a couple of points to it, but it's pretty and it adds some extra flavor. So I am going to go ahead and try a bite because this smells amazing and I can't wait. So, oop, there we go. Mm. That pesto is excellent. And you can use pesto for so much. Um, you can put it on sandwiches. You, there's a million different applications, but this is super easy. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own pasta not even needing a pasta dough roller. So, simple and easy. Let me know if you have any questions. If you make it, let me know how it goes, and I hope to see you next Tuesday.